Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of the Embodied Blonde Show. I'm so excited to be here today with Kristen. Kristen supports female entrepreneurs and coaches to get out of hustle and burnout and to flourish as a woman in life and business. Thank you so much for being here with me today, Kristen. Oh, it's my absolute pleasure. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. I'm so excited to dive in and to learn more about you and share you with everyone I know. Um, so could you just to start, tell us a little bit about your story and how you got into the work that you do? Oh, yes, absolutely. So my story starts <laughs> many years ago. Um, I had uh, been dealing um, with eating disorders for about 20 years. And so it's pretty intense um, food and body image issues. And I did a massive deep dive into um, personal healing. And that started me when I got to the other side of that, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> people, women have to know about this. And so I started out, this is about 13, 14 years ago, maybe, um, working with women around food and body image issues. And what I found is over, um, you know, that was my focus for the first nine years. And what I found is that, you know, through working with these women and through continuing my own personal growth journey and getting my own support and healing and transformational work is that everything just started to go deeper and deeper and deeper, really getting to the root cause. And, um, you know, over that time, I created my own methodology. And then it was like, oh, my God, like, this is so incredible. Um, and this is what I would do with anyone if they came to me for anything. Like, yeah. this is just this is the work. This is like the good stuff. And, um, and I sort of hit a point where I was like, I, I, it was just harder to connect to the, um, food and body image journey because I had healed so much beyond that. And, you know, over that time I was really growing as an entrepreneur and as a leader. And it was like, oh my God, like this is a journey in and of itself in so many ways. And so I started to shift my focus to work with um, female entrepreneurs, leaders, and coaches to see like, all right, what um, what is blocking you from um, that next level in your fullest expression and, you know, all of the things that go with being um, an entrepreneur. So that's how I am here. That's so beautiful. I can definitely relate. I had my own struggles with um, food and body image and eating disorders and it really is. I think for some people, when they look back on the stuff that they've been through, when you get to the other side of it, you can start to see what a gift it was because of like the path that it leads you down. Yeah, absolutely. And it was so funny. I had this um, sort of visual earlier today, actually, where it was like, you know, like, I haven't played a video game in a very long time, but I used to love video games. And it's like, you know, um, there's your little character that's like running around, like doing things and like finding the treasure and all of these things. And it's like, that is, um, those are also in this journey, the things that we often are hiding from. It's like, oh, that thing I don't want to look at, but it's like, that's where the treasure is. Like, go there, you're going to get the surprise and like the points, like all of that. So it's a fun little visual of like, um, you know, it's deep work. You got to look at stuff. Um, you've got to get intimate with, with yourself and, and do some deep work. And it's like, that's where the gold is. Mm -hmm. It's so true. And that I love that analogy. It's a great visual. I feel like we, you're right. Like usually where we're avoiding is where we need to look. And usually eventually the way that we're going to help people is what we struggled with the most, because we don't help people with what came easily to us because it came so easy. Right. You're yeah. like, you just do it. <laughs> <laughs> but when you've struggled and you've been there, you're like, you've been in the trenches, then you have a lot to offer other women. Yes. Yeah, you can look back and see, oh gosh, that's what um that's what was missing, that's what was needed, that's what was happening. Like there's so much that comes in hindsight once you've sort of 
been through a process and you're not stuck in it anymore. You know, when it, when you're in it, it's sort of like, this is my world, you know, this is how I see this issue. And when you're on the other side, it's like, oh, okay. There's, you know, there's so much more um, freedom and spaciousness to, to look at things. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's so true. Um, so I, could you tell us a little bit more about your effortless embodiment method? Yes, Okay. absolutely. So this is around the time where things really started to shift from, um, the food and body image into the entrepreneurial leadership space. Um, so I was still doing the food and body image stuff and I was working on a Facebook campaign and, um, I, well, a little, little background. Um, so I've been through some stuff and actually what started my issues with food and body image was that I was sexually abused when I was 12. And so that created a whole series of, you know, how I felt about myself, how, how I was in the world, how I showed up, how I didn't show up, um, fears of, um, you know, around safety and, and needing to control. It was a big one for me because I felt like if I can control things, then I can be safe. And this pattern started to get really loud and it got really loud when I was working on this Facebook campaign and I was putting together, I was trying to find a picture to go with the ad. And I was like, oh, this picture isn't right. This, no, that's not what I'm looking for. And I did that for hours. And I did that. Um, I, one night I was in bed and I was just going through, no, not this, not that this, you know, it's, it was so loud. And I realized that it was like four in the morning. And I was like, oh, oh, Okay like something's going on, like, this is not okay. This is not sustainable. Um, there is something happening here. So I am so grateful. I had, um, a mentor already at the time I reached out to her. She, um, you know, she had enough intuition to know this had to, this went back to the abuse and, you know, she had, she sort of took me through an exercise to do that was one of, if not the, it was probably the most transformational moment in my life where that, that need to control that was gripping so tightly in my body and my nervous system. And, you know, I had been to therapy for 20 years and I was already deep into personal development and all of this stuff. But this was like the deepest, like from my body, like I was like, cathartic like crying and shaking as this thing like left my body Mm -hmm. and it was like literally overnight like it was just gone like I just didn't have that anymore and it was like what (laughs) was that like what did we just do that I have been working for years to have a breakthrough here And it's just gone. Like, I don't even experience it anymore. And so what was at the foundation of that was really about getting to the root in the body, in the nervous system, at the source and releasing it there. And so that became, I was like, this has to be everything. Like I am, I am all about efficiency and it's like, let's just get to the root. We don't need to, you know, stay on the surface about things. And so that Uh, became the foundation for the effortless embodiment method. And then as I started to bring it to my clients, um, you know, it's evolved over the years and it's really like grown and added these different elements, but that's, that's what it is. It's like, after I lead them through the process, they are effortlessly embodying something new because the thing that was there is just gone. Yeah. That's so beautiful. I've had similar results with doing somatic practices where I have had like, there was a thing where I was having like consistent flashbacks and it was like, I couldn't get away from it. It was like, had its like claws in me. And I did 
like a couple of somatic practices. And then like, it was like being completely free for the first time in like 20 years. It was, in, it's insane how quickly it works, how effective it is and how, like, why aren't we telling everyone about this? Exactly. <laughs> this has to be the work. This has to be the work because we can only get so far by doing the mindset work that it, it is important. The mindset is, yes. Yes. isn't it like 5% is minds like 5% is your conscious mind, which is what the mindset work works with. And then the 95% is subconscious or, you know? Yeah. It's like, it's held in the body, right? It's mm-hmm. like, you know, and people, I don't know. I think people are, are much more aware now, but I know for a long time, and I'm sure there are many people out there who are like, oh, just get it, get over it. Just forget it. And it's mm-hmm. like, there, there are some things that live at the surface. And yes, I am a huge proponent of mindset. It's very important. It is one tool for certain things. And for those things that are like, ah, like I can't, it's like, it lives in your body. You know, it's not like just get over the past. Like it's not in the past. It's actually like stuck in your body. Yeah. And you're every time I think, I think I read this somewhere that like every time you are replaying it in your mind, you're almost re-traumatizing yourself. Like you're almost living through it again. Yeah. It's horrible. It's horrible. (laughs) Which is one of the reasons why people um, avoid things. And, you know, there's still like, I still got plenty of work to do. You know, there's still stuff that I'm like, I don't want to think about that. I don't want to look at that. And, um, you know, there's, got to create the time and space to, you know, really deal with the things, um, when we're ready and, um, yeah, like being able to, to really, um, go that deep, um, and have that transformation. Yeah. Amazing. I love that so much. Um, so you teach that a woman in her body is a woman in her power, which I absolutely love. Could you expand on that a little bit? <laughs> I love that you asked this. It's one of my favorite things to say. Whenever I'm like thinking of something to write, I'm like, I just want to write that over and over again. because it's, it's, <laughs> Yeah, seriously. Um, a woman in her body is a woman in her power. So I think most of us can relate to, um, you know, feelings of, you know, wanting to numb or wanting to escape or ways that we're dissociated from our body, ways that we're disconnected from our body. And a lot of us for so many reasons also, you know, enter patriarchy, um, have been taught to, um, you know, operate as men live from our head. There's so much that is not like, let's learn how to be women and how to be in our bodies. And then, you know, you, you add in um, the trauma and all of the different pieces that have us feel like it's not safe to be in my body. And so, you know, we go to our head, we start chasing things, we start escaping, drinking, you know, shopping, like all of the things. And that's not us in our power. And so the more that we're able to clear out the old um, resistances and fears and traumas and and limitations and the things that are, you know, living um, often dormant in our bodies, like until they're triggered, but they're always there, you know, Um, it's when we're able to clear that out, we're able to like drop down into our bodies, not be living from our head, not trying to, you know, leave the moment or the situation or the relationship or whatever is going on. And when we're connected to our body, that's our wisdom. That's our guidance. That's our intuition. You know, when we're like grounded in our bodies, like a woman in her body is a woman in her power. Oh, yes. Oh, it's so true. So well said. Um, So what would you say to the woman who knows that her gift can change the world and that she's meant for so much more? Oh, gosh. Yeah, this, I mean, this has been me so many times. This is probably me like at every next level 
Um, this is what I hear from like, and this is what I know. This is what I feel from so many women. And when you look at, you know, the coaching industry and becoming entrepreneurs and like taking the the reins for our life and our well-being, and it's it's also like there's this knowing that we have we have something so special. We have a gift. We have um, our, our voice, our power, our methodology, our, our way of looking at the world, our way of being. And it's like, that's in there. And I think a lot of times what happens, and I will say this is absolutely what happened for me, is because I was taught to operate more as a man and in my masculine and all of that. It's like, go out, hustle, like do the things, go for it, chase your dreams, like all of this stuff, which leads to burnout, <laughs> exhaustion, like wanting to throw in the towel. And, and it comes from such a good place. Initially, it's like, I have something, like I have something that can change the world. I meant for so much. And again, when we're um, coming up against our own um, how our nervous system has been wired, um, with our, our patterns, our beliefs, our fears, our resistances, like it's not safe to be seen. Like what if, um, people like make fun of me or tell me I'm an idiot or, you know, comparing with other people, um, there's so much that, that comes up. Like, am I worthy of this? Like, who am I to do this imposter syndrome? Like the list is so extensive. <laughs> And so I would say, like, first of all, to know that that feeling that you feel inside is so like pure and beautiful. And it is your gift. It is your power. It is the thing that you're here to do and here to be. And, and you are meant for so much more. And when you can like recognize like there's there's just some stuff that you get to look at because as we've talked about like there's so much growth in doing that work right it's like we're available for what we're available for mm -hmm. and then we do more work and we free ourselves up and it's like oh i am available for more okay i am available to hold more clients i am available to welcome in and hold more money like this is all stuff that happens when we do um, this deep nervous system work. Yes. It's amazing how something can go from being the hardest thing you've ever done to like the easiest thing you've ever done. And it does yes. in hindsight, it feels like it happened overnight when you're in it. I feel like it feels like it's taking 10 million. Oh God. Oh my God. <laughs> Forever. Like your yeah. whole life. <laughs> and then it's like, yeah. oh. you're like, oh, that was not even a big deal. <laughs> right. <laughs> What was that all about? Exactly. <laughs> but before it's like stopping everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Funny is so true. Um, you say, and I feel like this is just a little bit like what we've already been talking about, but I still want to ask you, mm -hmm. um, your greatest tool for manifestation is your nervous system. Could you tell mm. us about that? Yes. So I love this perspective also, because I feel like a lot of people talk about the nervous system in terms of like calming and grounding and all of these things that absolute, absolutely, like that is so glorious. Um, but a perspective that I hold with that in, innate in my work is like, it's also a creative tool. Like you can I believe that our nervous system creates our reality. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I'll, you know, I'll share one of the things that I've been having breakthroughs around as I'm um, looking at my own capacity to hold uh, money and wealth. Mm -hmm. And it's like, cause I had, I had a few lovely wins come in and they're like kind of big at once. And it's like, uh. <laughs> okay, <laughs> like let's take a minute with this. Mm -hmm. And like really allowing um, like my body to expand to it and, and calibrate to it. And, um, and this is what happens when like, that's 
our our nervous system is wired how it's wired. Like um, there's not enough, like all of the scarcity, survival things that can come on the money journey. Um, and that's how, how we get wired, you know, through no fault of our own. Um, and we are responsible for it, right? And so when we can um, do that work to rewire the nervous system, it's like you're literally creating a greater capacity to receive more, um, to hold, you know, more love, um, more clients, um, being able to be seen at greater levels by more people with more depth, um, like intimacy, you know, um, like there's, it's, it's a creative power. So it's not just the healing aspect. It's also looking at what do I desire and how can I rewire my nervous system? So it's wired for that. Like it's literally wired for your desires and your dreams and the success that you want. Oh my goodness. I love that. It's so true. Right. <laughs> That's what I'm working with right now this year. My word of the year is chalice and it's about mm. deepening. I feel like I have a really amazing capacity to receive, but then I get rid of it as quick as I can. Yes. Like the money. I'm like, get out of my bank account. This, this is not comfortable yes. because it's this sensation in my body of like fullness and having, and I'm not accustomed to it. So even though it's a very good feeling when something's unfamiliar, our system can read it as like dangerous. Yes. Yes. So it's it's exactly. about like getting comfortable with the sensation in, in our body. And so yeah. that, that's my thing this year. That's my whole thing. That's yes. That's exactly what's going on for me as well. <laughs> Um, which, in, and I wrote something down, um, so funny. I literally, I wrote this down like two hours ago. I wrote money flows out just as quickly as it flows in when your nervous system doesn't have the capacity to hold it. Yes. It stays and grows as your capacity to hold it expands. And this isn't intellectual. This is deep embodiment. But it also speaks to the difference between receiving and holding, yeah. right? Having, because I can receive all day long, yeah. but like my next level is like, let me hold some of this for a hot minute and like yeah. grow this. So I'm not just receiving and spending and receiving and investing and like money coming in and, you know, let's sign up for all of the things. It's also learning to, um, to hold and to have. And oh my God, when you can do that, and your capacity grows, then, you know, you start to receive yes. and hold at next levels. Yes. And then it gives the opportunity for the feminine gift of expansion. So the, the money does expand and we're not going to get there by like willpower. I know for me, I'm not, I'm not going to get there by like, okay, way. I'm going to follow this budget. And like, that's not uh -huh. the way, at least for me. And I think the feminine in general, it's not uh -huh. the way it works. It's not, that is like, just even the word budget. I'm like, no. stop. <laughs> stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. I love that we're having this conversation. This is so cool. Me too. Um, so you said in a post, you can't mindset your way out of trauma that's held in your body. So how do we address this? Like, what would you say to somebody who knows that they've got some work to do with trauma and they're like, where do I start? Mm, yeah. So, yeah. And I, I love this quote because it's, I mean, we've spoken to this already a bit, but it's like, there's, there's so much that mindset can do and there's so much that it can't even touch, right? It's all, it's all right here. And there's like this whole body of, of wisdom and like, and, and trauma, right? So when I look at, when when I work at, with a client, there's sort of three phases of it all. And um, I do have a program to go with each. So it's like one step at a time. So the first step is um, illumination. And that's like, let's look at what's going on and really get this 
deeper understanding. It's like a completely different paradigm because we have so been taught to intellectually understand who we are and how we are. And again, it's very helpful. Um, and when we can shift to the paradigm of the body and start to like, you know, look at things through sensation and emotions and feelings and look at, you know, things in our past, in our future, in our present, um, and like what's happening in our body, um, and bring all of that to the surface, like really illuminate it and see how, and this is one of the um, first things that I do with a client, um, is to, to lead them through an experience um, connecting to their body. You know, we take something like a pattern or a trigger or something that there is not ideal. And like we locate it in the body and we get to the root. Where did this come from? Right. So when we go back to my example with the, you know, control break issues, yeah. that was like a very specific moment that came from the abuse that came from like something I needed right after that I didn't get yeah. that I eventually did get once I did the work. Um, and so when we see not from our mind, but from our body. Oh my God. I, again, your nervous system creates re your reality. When you see like, oh my gosh, this sensation in my body is creating that pattern over and over and over and over in my life. Right. So when we look at like the stuff that we're looking at with money and, you know, receiving and, and like, oh, yay, let's just spend it away. But like, ooh, how does it feel to hold it and what fears come up, you know, all of that stuff. These are patterns in our body that are creating that. And so the first thing is, is just the illumination and to under like to really move into like the body led paradigm. The second phase is initiation. And so this is um, where, you know, when I'll work with a client and we really create that vision that, you know, who they're here to be, what they're here, like, you know, out in the future, like who, the thing, you know, you know, you know, like, this is what I'm here for, but like, how the hell do I get from here to there? Right. And, you know, it doesn't come from, you know, all of the things we've been taught, it comes from the embodiment. And so this is um, an activation that we do um, to like, like embody that next level self, like to, you know, not just to know like what she wears and what she does, look, which is all very fun. Like I am happy to do that. <laughs> and it, it just must also come with the embodiment. And it's so powerful. I've literally had clients like moved to tears when they actually like embody that piece of them. That is like the heart of like their future self, their next level self. It's like, oh my God, like, yes, this is something I've never felt before. And, and it's from that deep knowing in your body. That's like setting the GPS coordinates, right? It's like, okay, now this is where we're going. And I know who I am and I get to live from here. And then it's the process of becoming. Mm -hmm. And so it's like you've set those coordinates and, and you, you know, like who you get to be to show up, but there's the worthiness stuff and there's the fear of abandonment. And then, you know, there's all of the things that again, is like the different traumas and things to clear out of the body, which is what we do with the effortless embodiment method. And it's the process of like, you know, just going through releasing and rewiring all of these things and, and becoming um, that person. That's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. I love that so much. So do you have an example from your own life of how becoming a body led woman has changed things for you personally? Oh my goodness. I mean, <laughs> everything. <laughs> but I mean, it really is because it's just a different paradigm. You know, it's like, um, 
if I'm like trying to figure something out and like I, I have blind spots and I can't like, well, how am I going to get there? How am I going to, you know, why is this happening? All of these things that I could just spin for, you know, hours and years and decades. Like, I don't know. It's like, okay, I've got, I've got some tools. Um, I know how to drop into the body. I know how to um, use the sensations in my body and how my nervous system is wired to, um, to find the root of something. So, so many people are looking for, um, you know, the next strategy or yeah. like, you know, there's, there's so many things on the surface to do. Um, and again, you know, when I was working with women around food and body image, and there was a lot of emotional eating, it's like, okay, yeah, you can totally put some things in place that help the actual like how you're eating. But if you don't get to the deeper thing in your body, like you're just going to have to do those use those tools all the time. Yeah. And so I know how to use the fears and the sensations to get to the root. So I'm working on the real thing that's yeah. actually going to change the game. And, and I know how to, to release and rewire. Um, so, so that it comes, um, you know, from, from within. Yeah. So powerful. We only really can get so far, like I said before, like we yeah. talked about with willpower. It's just not a good strategy for the feminine. It's not. It's it's exhausting. Yeah. It's draining. Um, it's it's great for men. <laughs> yeah. It's 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 great for you know maybe some like short term, you know it's you you can use it in places. Um, it can be beneficial, but for like real deep fundamental transformation, like that's not going to do it. It's not going to do it. No, no. Um, so let me look at all these questions. I feel like we just seamlessly covered them without trying. It did. I know. Oh, would you, I love asking people this question. I love asking coaches. Do you have like a favorite success story or like a, any, anything that stands out where you're, it was just like this dramatic transformation with one of your clients? Oh my gosh. Um, I, I feel like all of them, <laughs> <laughs> there, like, there's so many things that stand out, um, that, you know, because I, this isn't everyone, but, you know, some people have, um, some pretty big traumas. You know, I look at like big T trauma and, um, small T trauma, right? So the big T trauma being, um, you know, rape, sexual abuse, um, physical violence, things like that. And then the small T traumas are like not feeling seen, not feeling loved. Like there's, you know, um, and the times like, gosh, there, there are some like big T traumas, um, and just to see someone on the other side of that is so glorious. They have their life back. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they found their power in, in something, right. It's like the video game that I was talking about at the beginning. It's like, they got the treasure. Mm -hmm. And that's, as, as you were saying, like, that's where the gratitude comes from. It's like, I'm so grateful that happened yeah. when, when you do the work, because then it, it shows you something um, about yourself. Yeah. Um, but there, there is, um, you know, just my, one of my most recent clients, um, is just most top of mind. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, we worked together for, I think four months and her transformation was, it was so beautiful. I mean, she was someone who just, she showed up so powerfully. She was, she was willing and ready to go deep. We went, we went very deep went all the way <laughs> and to watch, um, you know, because she came to me as many women do to, you know, work on her business and, um, you know, to, to be able to have, uh, more, more clients and more emotional resilience and a greater capacity and like all of the things that we're looking for, um, as entrepreneurs and getting ourselves out in the world. And she had this, um, parallel, 
um, health journey. Um, she was pregnant. She had um, a very at-risk pregnancy. And so first of all, that this woman still said, this is the time to do the work. Yeah. She is extraordinary. And it was so beautiful because this is always the process of like who you are becoming, like the woman you are becoming, like who can navigate um, not just being pregnant, not just running a business, but having an at-risk pregnancy. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she got to one point where, and I think she was um, just pretty close to, <laughs> to being due. Um, and oh God, her doctor said something like, oh, I am so surprised that you're still pregnant and that you're not in the hospital. And here she is like owning her power, her confidence, like opening her, her heart, um, like clients coming in, like signing deals, like money wins, like highest months ever. And it's like this woman, oh my God, just completely blew me away mm-hmm. to, so to see the power, because I, you know, very much that's, that's the typical thing with the entrepreneurial journey when I'm working with a woman, but to have this additional experience, I'm not usually working with a pregnant woman, you know, and to see like, oh my God, this is so, um, it's just, it's so powerful that Mm -hmm. she's navigating this pregnancy with such strength and confidence and health and well-being, like caring for everything everything it was extraordinary most women would have said i will deal with this on the other side i'm just gonna get my baby here like i'm I'm in the middle of a high-risk pregnancy i will invest in myself on the other side of that and they would have yeah. been totally justified in doing that totally that she was like no now is the time and then she just did it that's so inspiring yeah and you know some of the conversations that we had along the way um, is, I mean, we know of intergenerational trauma, right? And here she is literally like bringing in new life, holding new life in her womb. Yeah. And the stuff that she was able to release that she's not going to pass on to her child. Yeah. It was just so really just stunning and, and extraordinary to to watch it all happening. It's like, we can, um, you know, philosophize about things, but here is a real example of this happening. Um, and it, it, it was just so beautiful. That's amazing. That's so inspiring. Yeah. I love that so much. Um, so how, I think I asked you everything I wrote down to ask you, this has been such an incredible conversation. I'm so like, just thank you so much for agreeing to do this. And I can't wait till everybody watches it. And, um, I'm like back on schedule with my podcast episode. So it's probably going to get released like in a couple of days. Yay. I know (laughs) people find you and plug into your work. Um, and just like, you know, sign up for all your stuff. Yes. Yes. Please come find me and plug into my work and sign up for all this stuff. (laughs) We're going to. Yes. So I am a few different places. I am on um, Facebook and Instagram and it's Kristen Kanzler. And I'm sure my sp- spelling of my name will go along with the podcast. Yes, I will. Um, and then my website is also um, www.kristencanceler.com. So I'm just, you know, Kristen Kanzler across the board. Um, so you can find me on the socials and on my website. I, I love to hear from people, you know, even if it's just, hi, even if it's just, I heard the podcast, that was so cool. Um, you know, if you have like a beautiful takeaway or something really landed, or if you had an aha, that's like, oh my God, like that warms my heart so much. Um, I do have programs. I love, like my clients are, um, Oh gosh, they're, they're the reason for it all. You know, it's like, um, that, that connection, that, that bond that, that I form with these people when they, when they let me in and we're doing this work is so beautiful. 
Um, and, you know, people at every step of the way. So really, you know, if you want to dive in and, um, you know, go all the way, if you want to dip in a toe and start with one of my smaller programs, or if you just want to be connected and follow along and look at my stories and read my posts or get on my email list and get some updates, like everyone is so welcome at every level. And I know that anyone that comes through the beautiful portal of this podcast and my lovely friend Sarah um, is just so welcome in my world. Oh my goodness. Thank you. This was so fun. I'm excited to do it again sometime. We, we should definitely plan something. I would love that. All right. And it'll be fun because we'll see a different season in your background. Yeah. That tree won't be there. <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> Yes, I will take my Christmas decorations down at some point. <laughs> I love it's so funny because I'm like, I am rarely in a sweater, like, especially yeah. like if I'm home and in my cozy home, like I'm still yeah. often like in a tank top or something. But so we've got me in a sweater. We've got your beautiful holiday Christmas tree. Very so this seasonal. Is a very winter seasonal moment in time. And then maybe we'll have like a summer time. Moment. Yeah, I think we should plan for that for sure. I would love that. That would be super fun. All right. It's on the books. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Kristen. This was so fun. Absolutely. Thank you for inviting me and having me and introducing me to your people. And I'm so excited to see what comes. Me too. I'll see you soon. Yes. <laughs>